Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to this meeting of the Council of the Town of Oakville. I'd like to invite everyone to rise and join Council in singing of O Canada. Easier to say than to do. God grant us understanding and patience that justice, truth, and honesty may be evident in our decisions. Make us mindful of the needs of the people throughout the town of Oakville. Help us govern with the wider community in mind and so create in us a desire for progress and responsible action. We ask this in your name. Amen. Please join council now in a moment of silent reflection. Thank you, everyone. Madam Clerk, do we have any regrets for this evening? We have regrets from Councillor DeMoff and Councillor Duddick. Thank you. Councillor, are there any declarations of pecuniary interest? Seeing none, let me ask you to deal with your minutes. Don't be shy. Councillor Adams moves the minutes. A seconder, please. Councillor O'Mara, thank you. All in favor? Opposed to any, and the minutes are confirmed. Uh, our public presentation noted in the agenda has been uh, postponed because of the weather. And, uh, and with that, we come to our standing committee reports. And before us, we have the Administrative Services Committee meeting of January 19th and the 2015 Budget Committee of January 20th. Mm -hmm. Councillor Elgar moves both. Councillor Adams seconds. Any discussion? Councillor Robinson. Uh, Your Worship, I would just like to take the opportunity to remind everybody uh, of the letter that the chairman of the AOHS wrote, Mr. McMullen, and uh, you know, as one member of this council, I would like to recognize and offer appreciation for the, the diligence that these people continue to put in to the stakeholders and the non-boat stakeholders that use the harbors and uh, the efforts and the time and the professionalism that they offer to this council for all the good work that they do, and I appreciate the tone and the content of this letter they've submitted in their acceptance of ex actually what the Budget Committee brought forward to us tonight. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Robinson. Any others? All in favor? Opposed, if any? They are both adopted. Uh, Council, that brings us now to our main event, which is the financial and legal agreements related to the town's contribution to the new Oakville Hospital. And you have the report from the Chief Administrative Officer and uh, and me, and uh, Mr. Green, would you like to say anything? Uh, just a, a few comments, uh, Mayor Burton, to the members of Council. This is uh, what I believe will be the final of a series of reports that you've uh, received from uh, Mayor Burton and myself since about 2010. Uh, the last report was in August of uh, uh, 2014. Uh, this is the report which brings to you 
uh, the final uh, local share uh, contribution, which in accordance with the resolution and the uh, requirements of the hospital uh, is at 130 million. Uh, we, uh, in tonight's report, there is the bylaw which will authorize the regional Halton on behalf of the town of Oakville to uh, issue the dementias necessary. The uh, funding uh, of the 130 million, million is first uh, 40 million from the uh, sale of Blank, which was uh, sold a number of years ago by Oakville Hydro Corporation. Our share of that sale was 40 million. In addition, there will be some capital gains that were earned uh, by the town while that money was held by us. In a, and in the balance, which is approximately uh, just under 90 million, uh, will be funded uh, as a debenture. And the carrying costs uh, we anticipate, based on uh, our discussions with Oakville Hydro, can actually be carried by the commercial endeavors in green energy that will be undertaken by Hydro, which they're well along in doing. Uh, as part of the uh, uh, asking the region, we do need to pre-commit the $130 million uh, in the 2015 capital budget, which will then allow them to proceed. It will take about three to four months to complete that process. The, um, the funds will be transferred uh, several weeks ahead of the uh, substantial completion, which is now pegged uh, at July, I think it's mid-July of uh, this year. In fact, I understand the hospital is about the 90% completion mark, so there's uh, very little that would uh, delay that. The hospital anticipates moving in uh, in December of this year, so uh, to me this is perhaps one of the best news stories that I've ever had the privilege of standing before a council to talk about. So uh, I'm very proud of the work uh, that was done by our staff along with uh, Denise Hardman's staff at the hospital. I think it's been a great um, uh, effort and you have the uh, local share master agreement which we are recommending be executed. You may recall last uh, August when uh, we filed our report, there was also the matter of the uh, transfer of the land from uh, Oakville uh, Trafalgar Memorial Hospital, what will be the former lands of the town of Oakville. That agreement has been concluded uh, in terms of its negotiation uh, with the land being transferred uh, to the town of Oakville uh, in July uh, of this year as well. And then the uh, hospital will remain on that site operating until uh, December. They will then have some decommissioning and we anticipate our vacant possession by March 2016. So Mayor Burton, that would be my uh, synopsis of the report. Thank you very much. It's a, in my view a very proud moment. I'd like to uh, call Council's attention to the presence this evening of the President and CEO of the hospital, Denise Hardeen, uh, the Vice President and the uh, Chief Financial Officer and the President of the Foundation. Uh, which shows that uh, despite the weather, this, this commanded a certain amount of attention. Councillor Knoll. Uh, thank you, Worship. Um, a quick question, and I don't know, um, will we be hearing from the hospital board or should I make comments as well at the same time? We aren't planning to hear from the hospital board. Okay, great. Well, not great. I'd love to hear from the hospital board, but you know what I mean. You know what I mean. Um, my question is relates to a conversation that happened today at the region. I don't it, no, we didn't we weren't in camera and it relates to the uh, opportunity to take advantage of interest rates um, uh, they they want to lock in some interest some some debenturing on a other project that we're working on and hopefully will be approved this week and they talked about jumping in quickly to get that done. Is that something we're looking at doing and can we be prepared to move that ra that rapidly? Uh, things will move as rapidly as the region can move them along. Uh, once you prove the bylaw, I'm anticipating uh, Nancy Sully will be in contact with Mark Skinoka at the region to get the process moving. I they see. are aware of this coming. Uh, okay. We've had, uh, as you can imagine, numerous meetings yeah. with uh, Ms. McCaskill and Mr. Sonoka at the region. I, I, saw a head, I saw Nancy's head nodding in the background, so I guess she's already been in touch or she's aware of the uh, opportunities. So that's great. So my comments, I'm sorry. Councillor, I just want to point out, like I, like I mentioned this morning, um, uh, there's strong prospect that a month from now, the bank rate will go down again. Hmm. So um, uh, we don't need to rush too, too quickly. 
uh, another month we might get, uh, you know, another quarter point. So, uh, but it's it's being well looked after. I'll absolutely leave it in the hands of the financial experts because the team at both the region and the town are brilliant when it comes to this sort of thing. So I, I just wanted to uh, make sure that was on the uh, on the radar. Uh, do you want comments now? So my, my comment is this, that uh, I'm incredibly proud of the uh, step we're taking tonight. <clears throat> when we dealt with this, I mean, I was one of a couple that had some serious concerns, particularly around the financing. And um, we empowered the mayor and the CAO and the team to really uh, sharpen the pencil, make sure we're doing exactly what, we're, what we need to be doing to protect the taxpayers of the town of Oakville, to not only deliver the hospital in a timely fashion, but to also make sure that we do it in such a way that we are going to do it without impacting taxpayers. Um, through the tax levy and also not increase costs and keep it as affordable as possible. And I can tell you from what I've been reading and from what I've understood and from all the reports and everything else that we've done this and the, the whole team deserve five stars all the way around for this. Um, it's a very proud evening for, for me. I was on the board of the hospital when we, when we actually um, approved this journey in the first place. So it's really f fun to see from that day when we put our hands up around the table that said, yeah, we're gonna go ahead and expand with really no idea how it was gonna happen uh, to the point where we are today where uh, we're actually fulfilling the commitment that we've made uh, to achieve this uh, monumental uh, um, transaction for the town and this incredible facility for uh, the community. So I'm extremely proud to be on this council uh, that when we approved it, I'm proud to be on the council and we, we gave you guys that mandate to, to do your best job for the town and I'm proud to say that uh, I'm pleased to support this night. And I'd love to make the motion if, if I can uh, uh, flag that early uh, and be part of the history of, of uh, seeing the new hospital uh, come to fruition. Thank you very much, Councillor Knoll. It, it is remarkable how long it takes to do some things because it must have been 10, 12 years ago that, that this started. Councillor Elgar. Thank you. Through you, Mr. Mayor, I just to uh, like to also say thank you very much to our senior staff and to our senior staff at Oakville Hydro. It, it really is a case of working together, which has accomplished this. And I do recall uh, around the table here, there were a few na naysayers that this would ever happen, that it wouldn't be shouldered on the backs of the taxpayers. And uh, what, <coughs> what uh, I do, and I recall the mayor saying the taxpayers will not pay for have to pay for this hospital and it has it has come to fruition so I'm really pleased with what has happened and I'm glad to see the report tonight and the end of it all thank you thank you councillor uh, uh, councillor Khan if you'd permit me I want to stress it's also not on the backs of the ratepayers that is to say the customers of Oakville the Oakville customers of Oakville Hydro are not you know none of them are their bills are not being impacted by this in any way this is purely from new ventures outside of town, for the most part, and the ones that are in town uh, are uh, are all on top of uh, the, the normal course of business. Councillor Khan. Thank you, Your Worship. You know we're important when the Mayor of Oakville is, is telling the Bank of Canada where we're going next month, so that's, that's the kind of status we have. Um, my question is on page uh, 47. It, you don't need to turn to it, but something about... Um, decommissioning the existing hospital, uh, removing furniture, equipment, gas, oxygen lines. I just wanted to be clear, is that our responsibility or is that uh, HHS responsibility? And in the event that there are any uh, environmental issues, who's responsible for that? Uh, through you, Mayor Burton, there are certain things, uh, including the lines, the oxygen lines, things that are described that uh, Halton Health Services is responsible for. There are some underground tanks uh, that are also being removed. Uh, however, the remainder of the land is as is, whereas with us. Uh, first, I uh, can't remember, is it environmental class one? Phase one. Phase one that has been done on the lands, and we don't anticipate uh, a lot of uh, issues given that the hospital was really the first use of that land. I just want to. Uh just repeat the sentiments that the mayor and the other councillors made, that this is not being done uh, with, without any, um, uh, you know, uh, disadvantage or on the backs of, of the taxpayers. It, on page 49, you talk about the dividends that we expect from Oakville Hydro's 2.6 million this year. And then you go on to um, that, you know, after five years, uh, it's the dividend range from 6.5 to 8.5 million. 
what, what are we planning on changing that that's going to result in such a huge increase in dividends? Councillor, the investments that um, Oakville Hydro has made will be coming on, you know, you, you must appreciate that you don't get profits immediately. So what we have here is a, a coming revenue stream that's been um, mapped out, if you will, by the staff at Hydro and at the town. So uh, what you're seeing is the coming on stream of the profits from the business ventures. I guess just, just as, um, to satisfy a layperson here, after 30 years, that $90 million plus whatever interest might have accrued as between now and then will have been paid off by dividends that we've received from Oakville Hydro. Yes, that's correct. That, that's the plan. And, and in addition, Oakville Hydro will continue to develop new lines of business to continue, hopefully, to provide expanded dividends to us, a miniature EPCOR, if you will, and, and those funds will be able to assist the town in doing other projects. We have quite a number of large projects that our citizens are looking to us to do to make, you know, to continue to improve the town. So uh, the original goal of setting hydro on this path was to take pressure off of property taxes, not only for the hospital. And then as a bonus, when you get to the end of the hospital, uh, of paying off the hospital donation, that, that stream becomes available to the town for more projects. Just last question. Um, Mr. Green, if you can just elaborate on, on page 49 where you talk about the debt to reserve ratio being one to one now, and how long you anticipate us to last. Uh, Ms. Sully will address that. Through you, Mr. Chair, or Mayor Burton, uh, the debt to reserve ratio will be very close to the one to one when we issue the debt. So 2015, 2016, it'll gradually start to improve as we go forward. So by 2018, 19, it'll be down a fair bit. We're still well below debt limits though. I wanted to, you know, that's just a, a measure of um, liquidity, but we're still well within our own town limits for t tax supported debt and self supported debt. Councilor Giddings. Thank you. Through you, Mr. Mayor, I guess to CAO Green. Uh, further to Councilor Kahn's comments about the uh, projected special dividends. So those are primarily existing, and are there any new projects anticipated in the mix, or would that be uh, post-2019? Uh, through you, uh, Mayor Burton, uh, certainly there's a large mix of... Uh, uh, projects and one of the largest one that is opening uh, recently being commissioned is the Sunny Shores um, solar farm which is up in the Kingston area uh, that is coming on stream and we'll be starting to see significant revenues in 2015-2016 so there's a quite a number of projects that are ramping up over the next one to two years but there are also uh, a, lar a, a large number of projects that are being looked at uh, for commercial viability and, and opportunities for hydro. So that will always, I anticipate, be an ongoing um, endeavor. And obviously those projects aren't included in these numbers, so it looks healthy. That's right. These are the numbers that are required to support our endeavors with the hospital, and as the mayor says, anything that goes beyond that becomes something of opportunities for the town itself. Thanks, Kylie. Councillor Hutchins. Uh, to uh, Mr. Green, um, these figures from 2015 to, two th to 2019, uh, have they been factored in with the oil decrease in prices and the possible reduction in, in the cost of electricity and things like this? Impacting them and reducing the, the cash flow? To a large extent for you, Mayor Burton, uh, many of these uh, projects are under the green energy fit contracts and actually have uh, in excess or 20 years and 20 year plus guarantees from the uh, um, OPA. So they're actually OPA fit contracts to a large extent, as well as there's some other businesses. 
none of our projects are related, are, are subject to oil risk, let's call it. Um, and it's very hard to predict, especially the future. Um, no one knows whether oil is going to be $20 or $200. Councillor Robinson. I want to speak to a motion. I don't know if we have one to speak to yet, do we? Councillor Councilor Knoll wanted has to. moved the motion. I need a seconder. Councillor Hutchins has seconded. You may speak to the motion. Your Worship, uh, as already alluded to by at least two other councillors, you know, there's been, there were tough times here many years ago when we started talking about this. We were talking about $200 million. And there were people objecting like you wouldn't believe, and they were going to it was going to put the town in bankruptcy and there was going to be special fees and special charges and special this and special that to get it paid for. But you know, as we moved along and as you led this and others were involved in our, our very comprehensive staff control of how the publicity was worked out on this, people suddenly decided that we were doing the right thing and they understood it and they believed in it and now they realize that it's not costing as much as they originally were prepared to suffer through, as they, some would say. And, uh, and we don't hear any more, I can speak for Ward 1 in the broad here, I don't hear any more people complaining now about the cost of this thing. They're looking forward to it. They're asking, when is it going to open? They're happy. And I think this is a wonderful thing that we have done for the town of Oakville. Thank you very much, Councillor. Um, with that, I'll call the vote. All those in favor? All right. Uh, recorded vote is available on demand. We had a demand. All those in favor rise to be named. <coughs> Councillor Kahn, Councillor Adams, Councillor Grant, Councillor Knoll, Councillor Lapworth, Councillor Elgar, Mayor Burton, Councillor Hutchins, Councillor Giddings, Councillor Robinson, Councillor O'Meara. That, uh, that motion carries. And, uh, and thank you for being here at our historic moment. We won't detain you. <laughs> so, Council, I'd, I'd like to draw your attention now to the second item on the agenda, the support, uh, the resolution uh, that I introduced, seconded by Councillor Adams, uh, the support for the United Steelworkers Stop the Killing and Force the Law campaign relative to the Restray Amendments to the Canadian Criminal Code. And I don't propose to speak to it because the matter is self-explanatory and you've had it for quite a time. Uh, but, Councillor Adams, would you like to speak to it? nor he. Any other speakers? I'll put the vote then. All in favor? Opposed if any, and that does carry. I'll make the same preamble for the number three, the support for free and fair trade and open procurement between Canada and the United States. Um, and uh, Councillor Adams, do you want to speak to this one? Uh, the only um, comment I'd, I'd make is that uh, I'd like to make sure that our friends in Halton Hills get a copy of the past uh, resolution. It will. They will. I'll call the vote. All in favor? Opposed if any, and that carries. Thank you. Um, the first confidential discussion item before us is item C1. Um, do we have a motion on that one, Councillor Elgar? Yes, Councillor Elgar moves that. Councillor Hutchins seconds. All those in favor? And that is carried. And then on C2, uh, I'm looking for a motion to go into uh, a meeting closed to the public for the purposes of considering a, a matter pertaining to personal matters about identifiable individual, including municipal employees. Moved by Councillor Elgar, seconded by Councillor Hutchins. All in favor? Opposed, if any, and that carries. Madam Clerk, could you arrange the room for a meeting closed to the public for this matter, which is permitted under the Municipal Act? All right, Council now resumes its meeting open to the public, having met under the provisions of the Municipal Act uh, in a meeting closed to the public to consider a personal matter um, involving uh, an identifiable individual, including municipal employees. Um, and uh, in the meeting closed, in the session closed to the public, Council gave direction to staff. Um, that brings us to our advisory committee minutes, but we have none listed for this agenda. You've had your information items circulated electronically and your status of outstanding issues list. Is there new business, a notice of motion or emergency or congratulatory or condolence matter? 
I know of none. However, uh, with great delight, I uh, recognize Councillor Lapworth for a report on the library. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, this is uh, primarily for the, the folks at TV Land at Home, as the chamber is substantially empty, and for our members here in Council. The Oakville Public Library Board believes that the future of the library content is digital, and that library space is collaborative, innovative, and flexible. With this in mind, a transition budget has been proposed that will ensure technology and library spaces are available, ready for the future, while at the same time ensuring that we are preserving the past. One exciting proposal is a retrofit of the existing Glen Abbey branch to include a makerspace where customers can interact with new technologies, such as a 3D printer, as well as a space that ensures creativity, collaboration, and innovation. A capital proposal has been submitted as part of the 2015 budget that would see the project begin in 2015 with a targeted opening in early 2016. As more digital platforms are developed and more digital content is being made available to libraries, the Oakville Public Library has proposed a shift in focus of the collection budget to digital. This proposal includes increasing the digital investment by 10% for each of the next five years within the collection envelope. This would include e-books, audiobooks, e-magazines, as well as streaming movies and television. The Oakville Public Library currently has approximately 90,000 holders as at the end of 2014, 75% of which are adults and 25% for children. The collections, the physical collection is approximately 360,000 items consisting of books, magazines, DVDs, CDs, etc. Now the digital collection, the library offers 20,866 items, both e-books and e-audio books through our OverDrive collection and access to three digital platforms that further enhance our digital offering. Zinio, access to over 100 e-magazines, Hoopla, access to stream over 10,000 e-audiobooks, music albums, movies, and TV shows. And Freegal, access to the Sony Music Catalog, estimated at over 2 million songs. Thank you. Thank you very much, Councillor. Are there questions for the Councillor? Councillor Robinson. Thank you very much, Your Worship. I'm not sure who's the right person to answer this, but will this report that we've just heard as encouraging as it is, will it have any negative impact on what we're anticipating the capital budget will approve this year for Bronte? Hopefully not. Pardon me? Hopefully not. Well, I'm, I'm concerned the about the committee. word hopefully. <laughs> can I get a positive answer to that, Your Worship? I don't think you can get an answer here tonight. But, you know, we'll get it to you. I think I need to do something. This sounds rather discouraging, Your Worship. Uh, uh, Councillor, I don't have the capital budget in front of me. I'm not aware of any negative impact whatsoever on Brawny, uh, but I'm startled by your question. Uh, I can't answer it, so I'm oh. going to wait. Oh, okay, thanks. Okay. okay. Councillor Noel. Um, I may be able to provide a little bit of relief in the sense that the information that Councillor, I, I also serve on the library board, as you know, and have been on for a number of years. Um, the information that Councillor Lapworth is reporting relates primarily to um, the change in um, operating protocols and, and, the, and the use of operation, operating funds as opposed to capital. So it's basically, it's a redirection from printed material to electronic material. It really does not relate to the capital project. The board is not aware of any changes to the current capital plan at this point. It's, it's subject to the, it's subject to, uh, the budget committee's um, consideration, but at this time, it's, they're not related whatsoever. Okay, the, information, so the information, if anything, is very positive for not only for um, the um, Glen Abbey Library, but it's positive for current libraries and future libraries because it increases the ability of uh, the libraries to remain relevant uh, for, for generations to come. Okay, th thanks, Councilman, all very much for that. As you know, Bronte's been deferred twice already, so th thanks very much. We're still planning to build a library in Bronte. So, 
So you can, you can put, turn the frown upside down and smile again. All right. Um, Councilor Robinson, you have another opportunity to smile. We have two requests for reports from Councilor Robinson and Councilor O'Meara. Uh, the first is the Brawny Village Community Improvement Plan request for report that staff be requested to report back to Council on the timing and type of community improvement plan and funding sources that may be appropriate for Brawny Village following the conclusion of the growth area review and livable Oakville plan policy update for Brawny Village. Um, uh, on that, Your Worship, that's really brought forward from the previous council meeting, which at the request of the Ward 2 Council, we separated it and brought it back as a request for a report. I think we all remember, yeah. and, and I believe we're all about to support your request. Thank you. I'll just test that now by asking for the vote. All those in favor? Everyone supported it, Ralph. Brownie can smile again. The next one is advisory committees. Moved by Councilor Robinson, seconded by Councilor O'Meara that staff be requested to report back to council on the resurrection of the following advisory committees. Cultural Advisory Committee, Parks and Recreation Advisory Committee, Traffic Advisory Committee, Transit Advisory Committee, Oakville Youth Advisory Committee. All those in favor? Opposed if any? That carries, your, your requests are approved. Keep smiling. All right. Um, that brings us to consideration and reading of the bylaws. I would appreciate a mover and seconder for the bylaws. Councillor Kahn, Councillor Elgar, that's authority for the bylaws as listed in the agenda tonight. All those in favor? Opposed to Finney. And the bylaws are adopted. Thank you, everyone. It's been great working with you this evening. I really appreciate the time and attention that you've brought to our business, and we are adjourned. <laughs>